Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by Inner Money Stocks. Today is Friday, February 15th, 2013. Thank you all for tuning in. Let's jump right into the charts here. We will start off with the usual S&P 500 E-mini futures. You'll see that the futures are trading lower by just one point to $1,517.50 per contract. So the H contract here, that is March, uh, trading down just a dollar here. You can see that the futures did rally up this morning right around 4 a.m. Let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index and see what that is doing. The dollar is showing really good strength today. You can see a little pullback did come in the dollar, but now recapturing that uh, little downslide and now moving back higher. Uh, the markets do not to seem to be shaken by the stronger dollar today. Um, there's a few things going on out here um, that are worth talking about. Uh, one, this weekend you're going to have a big G20 meeting taking place in Moscow, Russia. So again, uh, the central bankers and the finance ministers are all going to get together and they're going to see if they could solve uh, a puzzle to this little currency war of everybody devaluing their currency at the same time. So let's see how that plays out. But again, uh, the central bankers and the finance ministers of uh, 20 different nations are all going to meet in Moscow, Russia. The irony here is that Russia was just hit with the media right last night. Um, well, that was central Russia. So I wonder if uh, that media right is sending a little omen to the bankers. But either way, uh, they're going to get they're going to meet this weekend in Russia, uh, in Moscow, uh, to talk about all the devaluation that's been going on. And we'll just see what comes out of that. I'm not going to make too much out of it. Um, again, all these bankers are probably in the same camp together. Um, it's going to be curious to see how German, uh, how J Japan's going to react since they've already gone on record saying they're going to get their stock market up to, to 13000 by the end of March. Um, also in Europe, you're getting more and more negative news coming out of the European Union. So just be in store for that. Uh, looks like Spanish core inflation. Uh, that jumped up to, an, to an, uh, I believe, 2.2% in the month of January. Uh, rising inflation is hitting Europe. They want to lower rates. Uh, the ECB wants to lower rates soon to try to devalue the, uh, the, the, the currency of the euro. But uh, I don't know if they can do it at this stage of the game when you're getting this type of inflation. And that's what happens when you print money. The, the end effect is going to be inflation. And sometimes it can get very, very quickly... Uh, spun out of control. So it's not going on only in Europe. It's going on here in the United States. It's going on in Japan. It's going on in China. It's going on all over the world. So uh, Zimbabwe, take a look at their markets and you'll see exactly what's happening. But that's the end result when you print this kind of money. Uh, you're going to have some economic data out today. <clears throat> so I believe you're going to have 9.15 uh, a.m. You'll have industrial production. Uh, also a little bit later, you'll have... Um, some other economic news but again it's a Friday generally the volume will will die out probably around 12 o'clock 1130 maybe uh, this week has been one of the lighter trading weeks uh, of the you know past 10 years as far as I'm concerned I, I just can't believe we're in uh, the second week of February with an options expiration and and the markets just trading this you know Mickey Mouse type volume but uh, it is what it is and, and that's how you have to look at it um, over you know over the long haul it is uh, it is going to be problematic. All right, let's take a look here at um, at the Asian markets real quickly. Nikkei was down 1.1% uh, uh, last night. Uh, the Shanghai was up about a half a percent. Uh, everything else was was pretty mild. Um, nothing nothing really to speak about. But again, you're getting that that Nikkei 225, which is Japan, to be very very volatile, and you're seeing that type of action each and every day. And again, it, it's just all about money printing and what they're doing out there as far as money is concerned. Okay, let's take a look here at um, gold this morning. Gold is trading uh, lower by $14 to $1,622 an ounce. I've been telling you even in here, gold still looks like it wants to go lower, and I think it is headed lower. Let's take a look at the GLD this morning. You'll see that the GLD is trading at 156.62. So the GLD, in my opinion, um, still looks like it wants to go lower. So. Uh, there's really no reason to get in front of this. You do have a stronger dollar as of late. You do have um, a lot of money printing. The only people, um, well, I don't want to say the only people, but uh, there have been a lot of gold and silver purchases by the public. That is always a telltale sign that gold wants to pull back. But at some point, it will be a buy again. Um, last year, I believe the central bankers in 2012 bought a record amount of gold. So 
Uh, again, if the, if the central bankers don't believe gold is money, why are they buying so much of it? But um, it is what it is. Gold still looks weak on the charts. That's what you want to follow. So be careful there. I don't think uh, there's really any play on the long side for gold at the moment. There will be in due time, though. Uh, let's take a look at oil this morning. Light sweet crude is trading lower by 71 cents. That's an effect of the stronger dollar. Stronger dollar, oil prices go lower. Uh, light sweet crude is trading at $96.61 a barrel. Let's take a look at the USO, which is a good proxy for light sweet crude. And you'll see a nice big sell off there as well. Uh, yesterday, the USO closed at $35.27. Today, it's trading just underneath $35. Bucks. So you're getting a little downtick there. Again, that's just a byproduct of having a strong currency. You'll get weaker commodities, um, weaker oil prices, or lower oil prices, I should say. But, um, you know, again, if they devalue the dollar and start printing more money, then obviously uh, oil prices will go back up. So will gold and everything else. So, again, uh, keep that always in mind when the president talks about creating an oil task force and things like that. Just say, hey, Mr. President, do you have a weak dollar or a strong dollar? And that will... That will answer his question and save some money for the taxpayers on creating these ridiculous task forces. Okay, let's take a look here at um, a stock in the news today, Herbalife. Herbalife catching a big, big bid yesterday after the close. Uh, War of the Whales. Uh, you got Carl Icahn uh, and Bill Ackman. Icahn saying he's uh, took a 13% stake or nearly a 13% stake in Herbalife, sending the stock to the moon yesterday. Um, and it's pulling back a little bit from those highs, but look where it closed yesterday. That is just a massive, massive pop from 38.27 all the way up towards the $48 level. Right now, it's settling in around $45.40. So the War of the Whales continues, and uh, round one goes to Icon, if you ask me. Um, looking at these markets overall today, it is a Friday. It, it will be light volume. Every little downtick seems to be bought. Generally on a Friday, what we look for is a flat to slightly positive trading session. And I think that's, you know, ultimately what you should look for today, flat to slightly positive trading session. I don't think you're going to see any huge move. I don't think you're going to see any uh, uh, big, big declines. I just think that the market's flat to slightly positive is usually the Friday forecast, and we're going to stick with that as that trend has been playing out for probably five years. All right, with that said, everybody, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Have a great trading day, and we'll see you on the charts. Take care now.